Hello, welcome to Proxmox Quick Tips with Appelard. Today we're going to talk about basic Linux images and cloud init. This is going to be a real fast video, so we're going to jump right on into it. Basically, we're going to download some Linux images of basic distributions like Debian, Ubuntu, all of our favorites. Then we're going to create templates of them in Proxmox so that we can clone that template whenever we want a nice, simple virtual machine to use. And to make life easy for ourselves, we're going to make sure we set up all the settings in cloud init so that we can manage our user accounts, public keys, IP addresses, etc. through Proxmox, and it'll just work every time we create a new clone. So let's jump right on in. So before I automate this, I'm going to show you the manual way of creating this. A number of distributions provide images designed for public cloud providers, and we can make use of these too. So in this case, this is the Ubuntu downloads, cloudimages.ubuntu.com, and we can see these are the builds they do of cloud images. So we could get a release image or we could get a daily image. And you're probably going to want a release image for most things. Maybe you want to try out the dailies too. I'm going to get a release image. So I'm going to come over here and pick the version. In this case, the most recent LTS is 22.04. So we'll click on that one. And if we go all the way down and click release, it'll automatically take us to the most recent one. And they have a number of images here. So in most cases, you want the 64-bit cloud image. So we'll just right-click on that and copy the link. So now back in Proxmox, we're going to create the virtual machine that we're going to use as a template. And we're never going to run this VM, we're just going to use it as a template for settings. So I like to put my templates up at high numbers. So I'll make it at 590. You can put it in the 900s, 9000s, whatever you want. The name has to be DNS friendly, so you can't use underscores or dots. In this case, we're going to say do not use any media and Linux. System, we're going to use vertio SCSI single. I'm going to check the QEMU agent box. Disks, I'm going to delete the disk because we're going to add the disk later. And you can pick how many CPUs you want. Don't pick a number that's higher than the number you have in your machine. So I'll pick four as my default. And type, usually host is a pretty good default here. Unless you're in a cluster, then you'll probably know what to pick. Memory, this is something you can always add to later. This is just going to be a template, so 1024 is kind of like a minimum. And network will set up some basic default networking settings and confirm. So now that our template's been created, we can add a disk, download our disk, and add it. So we're going to go to the shell and we're going to wget that link we just copied. So wget and then paste it in. And there it goes, it's going to download. So now that we've downloaded the cloud image, we can add it to the VM. So qm disk import and then our VM ID which in my case is 590 and then the file name which is Ubuntu let it auto complete and the storage we like to store it on which in my case is local ZFS you can of course choose whatever storage you like for this template so now it's completed we go in here to hardware we see we have an unused disk so we're going to add it we're going to use SCSI single enable discard and there we go then we can delete our CD drive because we don't need CDs, it's a VM. And add a cloud init drive. This is going to show up as a virtual CD drive, so we'll put it on our ZFS pool. There's plenty of space there. So now that we have a cloud init drive, we can set cloud init settings. So if you want to have a username, you can say your username here, let's say Appelard. If you like to use password-based authentication, you can put a password in here. If you want to specify specific DNS servers, you can put those in. I can paste in my SSH public key. So if you have an SSH public key for SSH auth, you can paste that in. And IP config. In this case, we have one network adapter, so it shows net zero config. You can just say DHCP and Slack, or you can give it an address. So there we go. I put in my address in my gateway. I'll let it do IPv4 for DHCP, and we're okay. And last thing, we need to set the boot order. Because we added the drive manually, the boot order hasn't been set. So we need to enable SCSI and make it first before net zero. So that should be all we need to configure. Now what we can do is right click on this and convert to template. And that'll make it so we can't modify the template anymore. There we go, so it's got the template icon. Now we can't modify it too much and we can clone it. So if you happen to be a collector of Linux images and want more than just Ubuntu, I have a script on my website that'll help you download and create these VMs. So I'm gonna copy it here Come over to Proxmox. I'm going to paste it into a shell script called install.sh. So I'll paste it in. 
So now that I pasted it in, there's a couple things we probably want to modify. So we come down here after the function, there's an SSH key file and a username. And these two things are going to be the authentication settings used by default. And assuming you're using this by yourself, you're probably going to want to put your own username in here at AppleArt. And you're going to want to pass to your public key file. It has to be a file on disk, not just the actual literal key with one line per key. And so in this case, I've said it's going to be in the root user's home directory called idrsa.pub and the user's AppleArt. And you can change other settings if you want. And then after this, I have a whole bunch of images that I've found from the major distributions. So Debian 10, Debian 11, and then Debian, Debian 12 dailies. These are all the latest. Ubuntu 20.04 release, Ubuntu 22.04 release, and Ubuntu Lunar Lobster dailies. I've got a Fedora image and two CentOS stream images, release 8 and 9 daily. Neither of these guys have a latest link, so this is just the latest releases of the video. So if you want all of these, you can just run the script. And we, of course, need the public key file. Now idrsa.pub, paste it in, and then we can run it with bash. Now this will take a while, and don't leave the shell while it's doing it, because if you leave the shell in Proxmox, it'll quit your, your shell session. So here we go. Now, there are some distributions that don't provide images like this. So I've shown Ubuntu and Debian, which are my two favorites. You can also get Fedora and CentOS Stream pretty easily. A lot of distributions provide cloud image builders, which allow you to build your own cloud image. And that's a bit out of the scope of this video. So Alpine, for example, does that. Some of the more rolling distributions do that. So now that we've got all these templates here, how do we create a new VM using one? So here I got Ubuntu Lunar Lobster. It's a fun name. We're going to say clone. Lobsters. And for mode, you can choose linked clone or full clone. And if you choose a full clone, it'll create a copy of the virtual machine disk. And because these cloud images are so darn tiny, most of them are all like less than two gigs, I would recommend doing a full clone because you're going to have all this headache if you can delete and modify the template in the future. If you have any VMs that depend on a template, they're linked, then you can't delete that template. The template has to stay as well. If you create a full clone, then you're free to delete the template later. So now that I got my new clone called Lobsters, I can, I'm free to change any settings I want. Uh, another thing to note is that the script I wrote sets up a serial terminal for all of these instead of a uh, VGA terminal, which is just kind of a nice handy thing because you can copy and paste into it. But you can change it back to VGA if you want to use VGA. So under Cloud in it here, we can change our IP address. So I have DHCP and Slack as my default, but if I want to come and set this to an IP address, so I've set up my IPv6 address that I can click regenerate image. So it'll save the cloud init settings and then I can click start and I don't have to run an installer or anything. I just got a brand new Ubuntu 23.04 Lunar Lobster image. And when it boots up the first time, cloud init is going to regenerate the SSH host keys for us and apply all of the settings in our cloud init files. So it's going to add the user, add the SSH keys, do the network setting, all that good stuff. Get a login prompt. Now, for the purpose of this video, I did set a password for it, but usually you should be using SSH keys. There you go, I'm logged in. See, it set the address I wanted to set. So say for the purposes of this video, I wanted to install a bunch of software and then make a copy of that. Can I still do that with CloudInit? Well, yes. So on this Lobster's VM, I'm going to install iperf3. So we install iperf3. There it goes. We're going to say, don't start it as a daemon. We have the option to. And there we go, and then we're going to shut down. So now I have a VM named Lobsters with iperf installed that I've configured. Now I can clone that VM. So we got new Lobsters. So I probably want to give it a new IP address. So we were 79 before, I guess I'll make this one 78. Regenerate image. And start it up. And now we're going to start from our template that was Lobsters. We're going to change the IP address, and we're going to change the host name to match our VM name, because our host name always matches our VM name, which is kind of nice. And now we're going to have two VMs that we've configured without having to do hardly any work. So on our old lobsters, I'm going to log in and run iperf server. And on our new lobsters, see where lobster is new, we can do iperf to the other one.
There we go, 18 gigabits across the virtual interface. How cool is that? Hope you guys enjoyed this new format, the Proxmox Quick Tips. I definitely plan on making some more of these in the future, so let me know what uh, little Proxmox tutorials would really help you out. Thanks for coming along. As always, I have a Discord server linked down below. You can find the script I use to download all of those Linux images on my website, blog post in the description. Yeah, as always, I'll see you on the next adventure.